Now, don't go shouting on me now. We can't have her. You don't get radical and say amen or anything like that. All right, where are we at? You going to stay in here tonight? Or are you going back there? Okay. There we go. Praise the Lord. All right. Volunteer to give these out. I know you, some of you might think I'm crazy, but I tell you, I'm preaching truth, and you know it. <coughs> Didn't you know that you can't hurt a, a dead man? <laughs> Have you ever walked up to a casket and, and tell the guy what you think of him, and you know he don't even raise his eyebrow? Well, he did. Well, I know we still are in these bodies, and these bodies have emotions and feelings. Sometimes I wish we didn't have some of them, but we do. I'm going to teach you on spiritual warfare tonight. Spiritual warfare. Okay, are we ready up there? Everybody read that. And, and, and they have overcome, that is the believers, conquered him, that is Satan, by means of the blood of the Lamb and by the utterance of their testimony. We all have a testimony. My testimony is I was a sinner, but now I'm a saint. I'm a child of God. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. For they did not love or cling to life. Come on now, that's, that's see, the, the self-life clings to life. And, and none of us want to be embarrassed. None of us want to fail. And this is a slow process of, of what God is working in all of our lives. And he don't kill us all at one time experimentally, but little by little, every blow. How many's had any blows last year that you remember? <laughs> You already be a little bit more dead in that area, but more alive in Christ. So, and cling to life even when faced with death, holding their lives cheap till they have to had to die for their witnessing. Now, get that in your mind, and you get delivered. Okay. Now, I want to talk about warfare tonight. Everybody got their uh, sheet. All right, just hold on to that. We're going we're gonna to move into that in just a little bit. Okay, our first scripture is in Ephesians chapter 6, <clears throat> verse 10. We've been talking about the body of Christ. Paul is using our body, showing the analogy of a human body and all the parts working compared to the body of Christ and all the parts working and functioning. And that's when you really have revival. If you got half of your body working, it ain't too much fun, is it? <laughs> but all the parts of your body, when it works, you're on top of things. You just like that. But if you've got half your body, parts of your body ain't working like it used to. Monday when I got up, my oldest daughter came up and said, Dad, I got a busted pipe in my trailer. Well, two days, took two days to fix it, but I got it. Can you imagine an 83-year-old man crawling up under a trailer that's about a two foot or a foot and a half high, up in there and end around like this, and, and then you got to find the leak. You don't do that. How many have you ever done that? Besides Rick back there, so, you done that? I know Frank has. You done that? Eighty-three. I said, God, I'm get too old for this. You what? I didn't hear what he said, but I'll let it go. But anyway, <clears throat> see, I don't have no hearing aid in that one. I lost that one, but I knew it was con. Because you love me. Okay, let's get going here. All right, Paul is talking to the Ephesians, talking to us. Listen to me. He says, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Now that, I ask questions when I read the Bible. How do you become strong in the Lord? Everybody agree with that? How do you become strong? I aim to tell you. Stick around. Be empowered through, be empowered through your union with him. In other words, you walk daily with the Lord. You're in union with him daily 
Okay? His life in you gives you strength as you walk in the Spirit. All right, now, draw your strength from Him. Boy, think about the reservoir of strength that's available to every one of us. Draw strength from Him. Look at that now. That strength which His boundless might provides. So He provides strength for us to walk and to be brave and to be strong against the powers of darkness. All right, let's go to the next verse now. Put on God's whole armor. Many Christians don't even know about the armor of God. The armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies. So God supplies his armor for us that you may be able to successfully be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and deceits of the devil. Now someone says, well, you know, the devil don't bother me. I'm under the blood. I'm under the blood. I'm under the blood. That's good protection. Make sure you're under the blood, that you're, you're obedient. But yet the Bible says, give no place to the devil. Now think that through. Give no place to the devil. Now, Paul wouldn't have said that if you couldn't. Everybody got it? How many's got it? So that means you can give place to the devil. Christians. He's talking to Christians. <coughs> because he tells us, <coughs> don't do that. Because you're going to be in trouble. But see, if you don't know his wiles and, and, this, and, and his strategies... Let's ask this question. How much did we give place to the devil today? But we're not aware of it, and so we, every day we give place to the devil. And all of a sudden, you're going, you hear a message like I'm going to preach tonight. You better quit giving place to the devil. Now, let's settle the fact. Can you give place to the devil? Yes. Yes. Because if you couldn't, Paul would have said, <laughs> you know, hallelujah, <laughs> don't worry about giving place to the devil, because you can't. No, he says to us, give no place to the devil. How many Christians, and, and I'm, not, I'm not a mean man, we just, we gotta, we just got to be open, we got to talk and share, give place to the devil. Now, <clears throat> Did you know when you're angry? Well, the Bible says be angry, but sin not. <clears throat> hmm. How about this? Be angry if you're not careful. If you let the sun go down on it, you might give place to the devil. Anybody hearing me? Yeah. So, if you, and, 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 and we're all in our human bodies. And, and anybody ever been angry in here besides me? <laughs> <laughs> but sin not. So, if you're angry, and you let the sun go down on your wrath, and you go to sleep that night, and you wake up angry, all during the night you've given place to the devil. You know what anger does? It weakens your liver. Anger weakens your liver. Let me tell you what else it does. If you just don't deal with it by refusing it and saying, Lord, that person may be angry, but Lord, you died for that person and I bless that person. I do not render evil for evil, but I bless that person that made me angry. I bless them coming in and I bless them going out. Are you listening? That's what you got to do. That's what the scripture says. I, we don't have time to look it up, but you, if you want to write it down, it's in 1 Peter or chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. And God says, if you bless them, he'll bless you. In fact, let's put that up real quick. That is so powerful. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse uh, uh, 
nine, eight, and eight, and then we'll hook nine. I mean, I'm not going to get through all of this in here. I just do the best I can. Okay. All right. Here we go. First Peter, chapter three, verse eight, and then nine. Are you ready? Finally, all of you should be of one and the same mind. All of you. Who's all of you? That's us. All the church. Sympathetic-ing with one another. Sympathizing, I'm sorry. Sympathizing with one another. You know, sometimes when you get hurt, you just want somebody to sympathize with you, don't you? You know. I hurt myself under the house the other day right there. And I said, look, Susan, look what you're doing. Look at this. Look at this. Give me some self-pity. <laughs> Do you know when you are in self-pity? Huh? You, you got to learn that. You know, and you just, man, can I have some ice cream on it too? <laughs> but that's the human element, see? But see, we have to stand against us. Look, finally, all of you should be of one mind and the same mind. United in spirit. In spirit, in our spirit. Sympathizing with one another, loving each other as brothers of one household, compassionate and courteous, tender hearted and humble. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something if you don't, you're giving heed to the devil. Are you listening? If we don't do that, you are giving place to the devil. Very simple, not complicated. And see, we don't realize it, but each day you give a little bit more and a little bit here and a little bit there. And you wonder why you, you, can't, you, you can't control your mind. Uh, you wonder why you're getting passive. Uh, you wonder why you're getting lazy. Uh, you wonder why you have these feelings towards different people in the church that that's not, not right because we're not practicing the word of God. We're giving place to the devil. All right, let's move on to a little bit to the next verse. Look at this next verse. Wow, man, this is powerful. Never return evil for evil. Never, never. Or insult for insult. Now, when I was in the world, I'd shoot you before you shoot me. Is that the way we used to do it? I was fast, man. Got you, boy. Look what it says. Never return evil for evil or insult for insult. Now, I want to say something. I know we get tired, but how many of you can keep your mind on what I'm saying? All the way through this message. Or has your mind been... I'm see, I, let's, I'll be honest. Oh, I, uh, I'd just love to just say, now, what, what have you been thinking about? That's you ain't been... Th- right huh? That's scripture that I keep reading. Right Okay. What have you been thinking about? <laughs> what have you been thinking about? <laughs> How many love me tonight? What have I been thinking about? <laughs> See, I'm saying that because if you don't recognize the strategy of the enemy, how he will steal from you by not allowing you to concentrate on the teacher. When I was in school, that's one thing that I always did. Never paid any attention to the teacher whatsoever and always looking out the window and can't wait to get out of school where I could go play. Anybody else was like that? Yeah. Look at it, one, bank to two, the other one. <laughs> see, but see, now I've had, when I begin to move in and become a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, see, some Christians don't even know they're a soldier. Paul said that to Timothy. We're soldiers. That's why we got God's armor. But, but listen to this. But on the contrary, blessings, praying for their welfare, happiness and protection, pro- protection, and truly pitying and loving them. For know that to this you have been called, that you may yourself inherit a blessing from God, that you may attain a blessing as heirs, bringing welfare and happiness and protection to people. Now, Let's be honest. When somebody's doing something you don't like, what do you do? Who said curse them out? <laughs> hey, yo! Huh? Come on, church. Don't lie to your pastor. Huh? 
Oh, you get angry. Hey, notice this. You get angry. Notice how the devil's working now. You get angry. What do we say uh, when you get angry? It weakens your liver. See, he's trying to take you out before your time. You got to bless. Let me tell you something. I'm telling you the truth. Let me see. I've walked this thing out for 60 years as a Christian. You have got to know the schemes of the enemy because he'll take you out before your time. Give no place to the devil. And we don't realize. Let me tell you where we give place most of all. Right in our mind. Right here in our mind. Your thinking facilities. What does the Bible say? Cast down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That's somewhere in the scriptures in it. In fact, I think I got it right here. How about that? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's our job. God does many things that I've been talking about. It's God, it's God, it's God. But this is us. We have to take authority over our thought life. Now, oh, right now, I've got Sandra Adams in the hospital. Sandra Adams in the hospital. She's checking out. I got one of my friends that we were we met when I was 12 years old and all these years I led him to Christ three years ago he's checking out my son-in-law uh has got heart problem and is gonna have to have an operation I got so much that I could worry about and feel sorry for myself 83 years old and I had to go up under that trailer and work and, and fix that water pipe for my daughter Boy, that's love, isn't it? But I'd have done the same thing for you. Casting down a mat. How do you do that? Anybody want to volunteer? Let me tell you if you don't know. You refuse it. You don't accept it. You cast it down out of your mind. You think on that which is good, honest, noble. You do that by the exercise of your will. Everybody say, you got a will? How do you drive your car? Excuse me. You drive your car, the wheel, your wheel. You turn to the left, you turn to the right. Or if you start thinking bad about somebody, you instantly take authority over that. God has given us abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness to rule in this life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. So here's what we have to learn to do. The enemy is going to come. Why do you think all of these people out there, why are these people shooting all those people like that for? Did you know where it started? Somebody point right there in your mind. All of us start right there in your brain. Everybody put your finger right there on your head. Go ahead. Right there. Right there. Cast it down. I tell you what, if that guy does that again, I'm going to shoot him. You cast that down right now. You don't do that. You're ruling and reigning in Christ. Listen to this now. How many can tell me that thoughts produce attitudes? Thoughts produce attitude. If somebody comes around me and they act a little funny and all, I realize, oh boy, their thought pattern has been thinking bad about me. I can discern that. No problem. You can too. Thoughts produce attitude. What type of attitude do you have towards your tax man? What kind of attitude do you have towards your president? Man, I need to shoot him. That's what you need to do. That ain't what God says. God says pray for those in authority. Yeah, yeah but I don't agree. Well, I don't agree with it. Either, but God's word says what? Right. Shoot him. Shoot him. Right. I, thought, I knew you had it right. Pray for him. Pray for those in authority. I don't like what Brother Bob is doing at the pastor. You're giving place to the devil. He's going to mop the floor with you and damage this body of believers by your, or my stinking attitude. 
Every couple, I sit back there and counsel with people. The devil gets in their mind, gives them a bad attitude. They're still in the show. I have to watch out. I have to do what I have to do. I have to, if, 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 I, if I'm always complimenting this young man here, the rest of some of you, not all of you, you you've, some of you have grown, really have grown, but well, he don't ever say that about me. Even with your children, you got 10 kids, you can't, you, if, you know, they know if you're loving one better than the other. We got three sisters here, four sisters. I bet you they could tell some stories. <laughs> Please give us a break, you don't. <laughs> oh, I know, but you changed a lot. But, but that's true, isn't that true? In a family, well, you, she always gets the biggest piece of cake. <laughs> well, well, why can't I have that big a piece of cake someday? Huh? Come on, church, this is where we live. It just goes over to the church. It goes out on the job. I bet I bet people out there on the job. I mean, uh, they are. I mean, awesome. So they know the plan, and the devil's moving. See, you start talking about that person, tear their character down. That's what you need to do in in the front of the eyes of the boss. Strategies of the enemy. All right, so thoughts produce attitudes. And what does attitudes produce? Somebody tell me. Hmm? Emotions. Everybody say emotions. Folks, I'm going to tell you something about your emotions. This came so alive to me when I was up there praying and, and with uh, Sandra Adams. And, and then we got home. We got the fel- a telephone call about my, my friend. He's 83, just like me. And... God gave me the privilege to win him to Christ three years ago. He's checking out, and it be, I can tell it begin to sort of get on me. And that, that's human. That's the human element. But see, all of a sudden, then Robert's getting operated on, and Sandra, she, can she handle this with her husband? All of these things are coming. Whoa, whoa, oh, oh, what am I going to cast those? All these imaginations, they're going to die. They, go, they ain't going to make it. And, and, all, and it gets into your emotions. And, and now you And now you're making decisions based on your emotions. This is really where we live. Until we learn to reign and rule in Christ, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the word of God, the devil will have his way in a lot of people's lives. Years ago, I realized that was one thing, and I remember in school, Passivity. I let my mind just drift. Your mind would just drift. And the devil's getting control over your mind. And he's able to insert those thoughts into your mind. They're called fiery darts. Some uh, scripture says missiles in your mind. What did I think that was that for? Why, why did I think that for? The enemy. All right, now. So if you don't deal with your uh, attitude, then it's going to affect your emotions and you feel cold towards that person that you've been thinking bad towards. And then it goes out into a behavior pattern and you see them on that side of the church and you walk over here. I watch people when everybody's uh, greeting people. I've watched them, watch you guys for years. and, and, And I've seen certain sisters that don't ever seem to connect. Certain brothers don't ever connect. Love me, Bob. I love you. I'm telling you the truth. Nothing but the doot. Doot nothing but the doot. Is that not true? You want to get away from that person. You don't want to talk to them because you've been thinking wrong about them. You ain't been praying. You've been talking about them. Put them down. Preach it, Bob. I believe I will because <laughs> I love everybody. If daddy don't tell you, you ain't going to know because the enemy will eat you alive. And you wonder why, what in the world? Why don't I have contact with God anymore? See, that's the trick of the enemy. If you're saved, he wants to divide. He comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. Satan has. Christ says, I come to give you life. But we have to learn to rule and reign in this life. 
I've seen, I've seen, I've seen um, people, and in, in, I know if you got to go to the party, you got to go to the party. Okay, I know that. But I'm preaching, and all of a sudden, boy, I tell you this, boy, I'm coming to the revelation. This is it. You know, they get up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> Say, let me back to Bob. I do. I love you. How many has ever done that? Look at there. One, honest, two, honest. Rest of you, I'll pray for you. <laughs> All right, grief, grief. You got to watch out. You're grieving. Yeah, it's natural to grieve. But uh, we've had to deal with people that grieved over their, their, their lost ones three or four or five years later. That's too much. There's a time to grieve. Then there's a time to stop it because the enemy can mount that up and you and have you you can have an, a spirit uh, an attitude of just grieving sadness comes over you grieving why am i happy why can't i be happy and you're grieving your spirit's grieving yeah there's a time to grieve but there's a time to say okay they're gone i'm here and i'm gonna get up and stand and become that soldier and i'm gonna cast those imaginations down As we were walking down the hallway uh, today in, in the hospital, the little, young girl must have been about 17 years old and, and, her, and her mother, she was crying and I stopped, I said, w what's going on? She said, I just lost my, my, my best friend in an automobile accident, which was about, she was about 17 years old. And uh, I said, well, can I pray with you? So I prayed and asked God to bring his comfort in and consolation and, and, and to uphold her and, and encourage her and everything. And then I begin to say, uh, was your friend a Christian? Oh, yeah, she was a good Christian. I said, well, you know, I know you're hurting. I know you're grieving right now. But let me tell you the good news. She ain't grieving. She's happy. Because, see, absent from the Lord, present with the Lord. See, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. My people suffer many times unnecessary because of the lack of knowledge. It's natural. I mean, I'm sure if I died, probably some of you shed a little bit of tears. I don't know. But, you know, uh, if you died, we'd probably shed a tear or two. But we'd say probably, I, what, what are we going to have for supper? You got to know how to handle all of that. You know what I mean? Because see, the devil will just, just bear down on you. And if you're not careful, three years later, you're still all worked up and tore up and everything. And that ain't the way God wants us to walk. Because see, there is a pointed unto man wants to die. That is this physical life. Now you're a Christian, you'll never die. Now look all that up in the scriptures. I wish I had time to preach on that tonight. You'll never die. Listen to this. For God so loved the world that he, what, gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him has, what, everlasting. everlasting life. Right now and then, when you are saved, right now, every one of us in here that are saved, and most, I think all of us are, we have everlasting life. What does that mean to you? That means you have everlasting life. <laughs> that means you ain't going to die. <laughs> oh, your body's going to quit breathing. How many wants to take these bodies to heaven with them? Nobody. Oh, she, I'm just checking that young girl over there. I, she said, no way to. <laughs> All right, so you got to get the right mindset. Because if you have the wrong mindset, you're going to go into depression. You're going to give ground to the devil. And just, it may take years to come out of that depression. And I've dealt with people like that. <clears throat> this woman was coming by... Uh, <clears throat> our house quite a bit years ago and she'd come and she'd cry and she'd weep and lay on the couch and Susan would try to minister to her and and and, and she about four times she'd done that and it was the same old thing and Susan would share the scriptures and this you know let's pray let's really get this let's give this to the Lord cast all your cares upon the Lord for he cares for you and you know but she just kept and one day the Holy Ghost came upon Susan and the Holy Ghost said through Susan, Sister, you stand up right now and you be strong in the Lord. You quit this self-pity party right now. You get with it. Do you hear me? That's what Susan said. Wow. And that woman went, it knocked 
popped her right out of her little self-pity party. She got off her potty real quick like, and I mean, she began to get strong and God, and Susan just kept pumping. I can do all things through Christ. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me. Yeah, that's true. See, we've been around a long time. And sometimes you have to say that to yourself. If there ain't somebody brave enough like Susan around to tell you, get up now and get with it. Everybody say, say your name. I'll say Bob. Say your name. Get up. Get with it. I'm strong in the Lord. I take authority over all the powers of darkness. Loosen my mind, my spirit, my family, my finances. And now, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. There you go. See, see, this body, this body will get sluggish. If you notice sometimes you can. Huh? I'm not, I'm not making fun, but you gotta take the the enemy will will just one day Susan had some eggs in her two fingers, you know, like authorized. She said, authorized, I command you loosen my fingers right now. In the name of Jesus, you hear me? Loosen my fingers right now. Hey. She's 82 years old. She'll jump rope if you turn the rope for her. <laughs> I'd like to get into her mind. She said, my pastor's nuts. <laughs> no, I just been around a long time. Cause see, if I don't do what I do, y'all <laughs> won't fall right out of the chair, go to sleep on me. Isn't that true? Come on now. How many fellows sleep in church? I don't want to. See. All right. Now here it goes. Thoughts produce attitudes. Attitudes produce emotions. You produce your own emotions. By your attitude, by your thinking, and then it goes into your behavior pattern, and it becomes a lifestyle. People say, i got to change my lifestyle. No, you go all the way back here and change your what? Thought pattern. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is that man. I'm going to say that again. You say it for me. Go ahead. So is that man. You are what you've been thinking. Because we, you develop this certain attitude and then it gets into your emotions. Uh, I, I tell people, never make a decision when you're angry. Never make a decision when you're hurt. Never make a decision when you're not in the spirit. Are you listening? See, very important to remember that. And I've seen people get mad and run out of church. <laughs> well, you can't run from God. You can run from me. You can run from some folks. Someone says, maybe I need a change. Maybe if I move to California, things will straighten up. No, you'll carry your problem with you because you are the problem. <sighs> Don't shop it down now. <laughs> and I put myself in the pot. I've had to talk to myself. Self? Yes. You straightened up right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because if you don't, Susan's going to straighten you up, boy. I better straighten up then. <laughs> All right. How many's got a wife that'll straighten you up? I thank God for my wife. Now, honey, what does the Bible say? No, 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 no. Settle down. All right. Now, everybody got your sheet? Be strong in the Lord. Here we go. Put that scripture up on the board again. Um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. This is how you become strong in the Lord. First, you, you, you know your new identity. You need one? You got one? Everybody got one? 
Need one, one more? Got some right there. All right. Everybody say, I'm born again. Now, it's important that you speak. Everybody understand that. Life and death is in the power of the foot. Huh? I say that wrong? Life and death is in the power of the ear. <laughs> in the nose. <laughs> Life and death is in the power of the tongue. All right, let's go. Everybody read. Ready? My Father in heaven, I pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of a virgin, lived as a man, died for my sins, arose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and now sits at your right hand in a position of power and authority. Now stop right there. We know that when Christ was raised from the dead, who was raised with him? Yeah. Ephesians tells us that we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. That is our seat, our place of authority. We share the throne with Christ. We are in him. And he is in us. Okay? Now, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, that he will return to earth in like manner as he was ascended into heaven. I have confessed every known sin. Now, we know that it's important if you're going to be strong in the Lord, you have to make sure and don't be going around. You know, if God don't show you, then you're clear. Very simple. Don't be trying to drum them up or let the devil. Now, right now, does anybody have any sin on them right now? Well, how do you know you don't? Well, you know the Bible. 1 John 1, 9. If I will confess with thy mouth, the, what? If I will confess with your mouth that you have sinned. I messed it up, didn't I? Somebody help me. John 1, 9. Put it on the board. Yeah, yeah, put it on the board. All right. If we freely admit that we have sinned, why is it so hard to admit? <clears throat> huh? <laughs> Just you, you admit you sin. Remember, God is faithful and just. To forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Look what it says. Confess that he is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins, dismiss our lawlessness, and continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything not in conformity to his will, in purpose, thought, and action. Now, when you've done that, and I ask you a question, you've done that, right? What sin do you have? Is God faithful? Yes. To do what? To forgive you and cleanse you. Now the devil comes along. You're not forgiven. You, you think God's going to forgive. Do you know what you said about Pastor Bob? You think he's, the Lord is going to forgive you? Yes, because he does not lie. He is faithful and just. But you see, still our minds are not renewed. And well, maybe he hasn't forgiven us. Now, let me tell you something. You're giving place to the devil. When you don't accept God's word and what God says, you are or I am given place to the devil. Are you listening? Very simple and complicated. And you're not going to walk in victory. God is not a man that he should lie. If you've honestly confessed that sin, God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you. Some people, 30 years ago they sinned and they're still all... I'll eat up with that sin that God's forgiven them if they've confessed it. See how tricky the enemy is? That's the subtlety of the enemy. You're not forgiven. And we all wrestle with this. Every human being wrestles with this. You got to put your foot down and you say, Devil, God is not a man that he should lie. He is faithful and just. And I've confessed my sin, therefore my sins are forgiven by God Almighty 
And that's the end of the matter. The devil will push you. How many wrestle with it? Let me see your hands. Don't lie to your pastor. 100%. I know. all do. That's the human element. But I'm saying to you, you got to be strong in the Lord. And you got to receive what the Lord has done. Everybody say, receive what the Lord has done. And what the Lord has said. And don't receive what the devil is saying to you. And you got to know the difference. A lot of people are forgiven with the devil just holding that condemnation. Religion will do that. Religion will just, you can never do it enough. You can never do it right. You can never, you can never be good enough. You just can't be good enough. You just keep doing this and you try to do that, but it's not good enough. And you try harder and it's not good enough. And you try harder and it's not good enough. It's never be good enough. Because you're dealing with religion and not a relationship with God Almighty as you are his child. He loves you. He cares for you. He died for you. And your sins are forgiven when you confess to the Lord. See the struggles we all have? We all have that. Now you might have grown to a point where you don't, are not bothered that, but a lot of people are. And they can never enjoy the freedom of the Spirit. The Bible says, stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. There's a liberty in the Spirit. Oh, it's like you're flying in the air. You're all free inside. You're free. Oh, yeah, the devil comes, but you know how to handle him. You give no place to the devil. And where do you give place to the devil? Right here. And then you speak it out. And you're given place to the devil. Okay, let's move real fast like. Here we go. All right. All right, I have confessed every known sin. I have asked and received your forgiveness. Make sure that you do that. I will make restitution whenever and wherever possible as the Holy Spirit directs. Sometimes you have to go to the person and say, listen, I'm sorry. You won't ever get released. My oldest daughter says to me when we got married, we didn't know how to raise kids. I didn't. Shut up. If you do that again, I'll knock your head off. We ruined my oldest daughter. I went many years ago, I went with her. I said, honey, I got to apologize to you. And I said, you know, when your mom and me got married, I didn't know how to raise kids, you know, and I had to learn to quit yelling and hollering and, and threatening that, that I'm going to send you to the moon if you don't straighten up. And see, that's religion. And we think we're doing right. Even bless the, 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 some of the doctors out there finding out you get people released by complimenting on the good things they do. Notice what the scripture says in Philippians. What does it say? That your faith will be energized as you acknowledge all the good things that are in you in Christ Jesus. Is in the word of God. See that little blue book? Better get it. So what are some of the good things that are in you? Father, I thank you that the Holy Ghost is in me. I thank you, Lord. I, am, I have a forgiven spirit. I bless every person that ever said anything bad about me. I love them. I bless them. I thank you. You're blessing me because I am blessing them. You're true to your word, Father. I thank you the blood of Christ has cleansed me from all sin. All sin. What sin do you have? If you've been cleansed from all sin, what sin do you have? But see, the devil was like, yeah, but. <laughs> Ain't no buts to it. You see, the goat nations, but, but there's the sheep nations. You know, one day there's going to be a judgment. Certain na nations of today are but nations. They're goat nations. And they will be judged. And the sheep nations will be judged. When Christ comes back, second coming. Now, a goat will butt, but. Well, you know, the scripture says, but, but. 
But you know, God will forgive you, but, but. The devil's a but. Did I say that in church? <laughs> Willie, why didn't you stop me? I ain't going no further. <laughs> but that's what a goat does, but, but. That's what the devil does, but, but. Well, God's forgiven me of all my sins, but, but. And you believe the but, which is the lies of the devil, and you don't believe God. All right, here we go. Are we ready? Hallelujah. I, I have renounced every occult and psychic involvement. That's one thing we need to do. In the, the kids today are getting so mixed up in all of these different books that are on the market today. The Potter, what is the Potter one? Harry Potter. Huh? Harry Potter. Yeah, Harry Potter. He, he's Harry, yeah. And, uh, and, 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 and you'll see there, what you'll see, their personality begins to change. Their personality begins to change. And where they once went to church, they don't go, they won't go to church no more. They don't read their Bible no more. The enemy is absolute. And watch what your kids are reading. Because it changes their attitude. And you wonder, what is wrong with my daughter or what is wrong with my son? And they won't step in church no more. And they just get, they take it over with the world. The world just takes them over. The devil takes them over. The God of this world, that's Satan. Father, we pray for that uh, sister that left, Lord. We ask that you just continue to work with her and move in her heart, Father. And I just thank you that for that right now, Lord. Just touch her, especially with your spirit, Lord. And let her, whatever she needs to confess, know that you're a faithful God and you'll forgive her. In Jesus' name, amen. Some people cannot stand the truth. I've had them run out of the church. That's okay. They can't run from God, okay? Now, she might have had a pain in her toe. I don't know, but... She ran with her phone. Uh, huh? She ran with her phone. She left her stuff there? Yeah, she had a phone call. She oh, she did? Okay, so, so that's good then. It was a phone call. That's another way the devil will do. <laughs> when the preacher's preaching, he'll have somebody call you. <laughs> Got you, didn't I? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. You don't believe that? Yeah. How many times have I seen that? Right in the midst of prayer. They'll do that. You doing okay? You okay? Yes. Okay. I thought maybe the boogeyman might have called you to run. Oh, no. Oh, that's good. All right. You stick around. Maybe you'll learn that I love everybody, but I do talk sort of strong sometimes. All right, here we go. Now, notice this. I have confessed every doom sin I've asked and received your forgiveness. I will make restitutions whenever and wherever possible as the Holy Spirit directs. I am willing to forgive myself and I'm willing to forget every confessed sin. Woo! Wow, powerful. I have renounced every occult and psychic involvement and influence as sin. And I will never again knowingly look for guidance or information to any other supernatural power or influence except the Holy Spirit. And now in faith, I believe that Jesus is my Savior, Lord, healer, deliverer, and friend. That you are my Heavenly Father and that the Holy Spirit dwells in my body. That through the blood of Jesus, I have, have been forgiven and cleansed of every and all sin. Let me tell you, remember what I preached Sunday? That mountain, mountain of grace, is bigger than anything in the world that we, that we might do. It can cover every and all sin. And it does that through the blood of Jesus I have been redeemed out of the hand of Satan and from his power over me. So you have to take authority. I believe that I am your child and a citizen and, all, and an heir of your kingdom. That my body belongs to Jesus and is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
that my spirit is filled and led by the Holy Spirit, and I now submit my body and soul to the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Satan, you are an intruder in this body. Every legal right has been removed, and you can no longer afflict, oppress, torment, or influence my soul or body. Satan, you are a liar, thief, and a destroyer. I will not tolerate your presence any longer. My Lord Jesus Christ is my deliverer. He has given me authority to expel every evil spirit from this body. And it doesn't mean the evil spirit can be in you, but it can be around you. The influence and the fiery darts and all of that. In certain cases, it can be that way. My Lord Jesus Christ is my deliverer. He has given me authority to expel every evil spirit from this body. The blood of Jesus makes it possible for me to expel you in the name of Jesus Christ. In faith, I claim this authority and power right now. You evil spirits, every one of you, every unclean spirit, every oppressing spirit, every tormenting spirit, every vexing spirit, every infirm spirit, every occult spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to leave this body and loose this soul. You must loose this mind. You must release this heart. You must leave this soul. You must loose this body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to go. The Holy Spirit is riding you from his temple and you must go now in the name and by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Woo! Now, that's a starter for you. Okay? You take that home and I challenge you every day. Do it out loud. Do it out loud. Now, here's what I do in, in, in my private uh, life when I pray for everybody. And, and I'm going to give you a little illustration. I've got five minutes. And, and when I'm in my... <clears throat> now, you don't... <clears throat> I don't rebuke the devil every moment and every second. But there's a certain amount of time you're going to have to spend and learn to spend that when you sense certain things that you know is not right, your attitude is changing uh, towards somebody or the church or God or whatever, the world. These things can take you over. How many people I know? I give you name after name. Sometimes already dead and gone. The devil talked them out of it. Now here's what I do. And I tell you, see, I learned spiritual warfare when I was in my wilderness. Jesus learned his spiritual warfare He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. You answer the devil with the word of God. Now, this is what I do. First, I cover myself. Say, Father, I thank you that I love everybody. I forgive everybody. Lord, I bless that brother that said that about me. I ask you to bless that brother in Jesus' name. God, I want to thank you for the power. I want to thank you, Lord, that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Lord, I lift up uh, the church, uh, uh, the shield of faith, every person in the shield. Lord, I ask, God, that you would just uh, strengthen them right now, Lord. Help them to learn the spiritual warfare. Lord, move upon them, oh God, to be obedient to to your word. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Now I take authority over every occult power, every spirit of darkness, every spirit of passivity, every spirit of darkness I bind that comes against this church in the name of Jesus. Lord, I see a brother that's sort of moving back, God, and he's not coming to church as he has come in the past. Lord, I pray that that spirit that would try to draw him away, I bind that power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, bring him back to his first love, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the blood of Christ. I sprinkle the blood over my family, over my children, over my wife, over the body of Christ. I sprinkle the blood of Christ. I thank you, Father, that I I can pray in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you've given me power over all the powers of the enemy. And I thank you that I give no place to the devil. Any passivity, I bind all passivity that comes against me or this body right now in the name of Jesus. And you go on as, and, and, and you find yourself getting freer, freer. How many understand that? You, it's not a now my name, but down to sleep prayer. You you got to get your body involved in it. Get your spirit involved in it. You know yourself. You can sit there and fall asleep praying. <laughs> That's right. Am I telling the truth? Remember toot. See, it's a real warfare. And we didn't get to, to talk about all the armament. That's why God gave, gave us his armament. Because Paul says we fight the good fight of faith. 
It is a fight. Yes, it was accomplished at Calvary, but we have to take what was accomplished at Calvary and speak it in our generation over our children, over our lives. Do not let your mind just float off. Because that, a passive mind is how the devil will get and put his, project his thought into your mind. You keep your mind under your control. That's your mind and that's my mind and it is our responsibility to bring every thought. Everybody say, every thought? Every thought. Susan says, for example, hey, well, what do you think about, we ordered this and this and this. I say, honey, I don't think about it. But I say the Lord, when he shows me something, we'll do what the Lord said other than that. I ain't gonna think about it. Why do I say that? Because I am so tuned by experience. You cannot allow your mind to drift off on one negative thing because you'll become negative. That's how powerful thoughts are. I mean, I'm telling you the truth. Now, if you go, well, I don't, I'll do what I want to do. I love you. You'll probably be, you know, if I'm around, you'll probably say, can you deliver me? Well, let's see what you've been doing. And we have to teach our children. Let's all pray now. Now in the name, but down, but sleep, but praise the Lord, but so to keep. Folks, it's got to get bigger than that. We are in warfare. And the Bible says in the last days, many shall give heed to seducing spirits. Christians giving heed to seducing spirits. They're out to seduce us. The spirits, the enemy powers of darkness. You get a chance, you read Ephesians 6. Now, I just covered a little bit tonight, but watch your thinking. Get into these scripture sheets. Uh, when I come over here on, on uh, uh, I am prepared, I am prepared to pray. I am prepared to preach. I don't just drift in this place without washing myself with the Word of God. Because I guarantee you, you can stay out of church for a whole week, you can become so carnal that, that it'll amaze you. Is that not true? It, it, because we get so caught up and, and, and there's, we got so much to do and I'm not fussing about that. But I'm saying we've got to keep ourselves in spiritual shape. And life will be much more easier, and the devil will not get a foothold in our lives. Now, somebody might need prayer right now, so come up and let us pray for you. If you need prayer, come on, All right, come on up, sister. All right, everybody, come on up. Let's pray for our sister. Okay, you can stand right there. Have you, have you ever heard preaching like this? Yes. Yeah, well, good. Yes. I didn't Thank shock you. you too much. Uh, all right, turn around this way. All right, the body of Christ is going to pray for you. Okay. Any particular thing that you want us to hit on the head in pr our, the prayer? My school completion. Your what? My school completion. Your school completion? All right, you're uh, getting educated. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> all right. Father, I want to thank you. All right, let me say this first. You know without a doubt that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. I do. If you die right now, where would you go? That's Heaven. right. Because that's what the word of the Lord says. And you believe what God says. Mm -hmm. And you confess what you believe. I do. And it's good. Do you need to forgive anybody? I think after the past couple of weeks, yes. Okay, let's start with that. <laughs> Let's say, Father, Father, I forgive. I forgive. You don't have to mention their name, but if you want to, I Several forgive. Several people. Yes, Lord, I release them. I release them. I bless them. I bless them. And I loosen myself. And I loosen myself. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now I want name. you to raise your hands and say, thank you for the cleansing of the blood. Thank you for the cleansing of the blood. I believe. I believe. That Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Is the Son of God. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart that God raised Him from the dead. That God raised Him from the Therefore dead. Therefore, I am saved. Therefore, I am saved. I forgive my father. I forgive my father. My mother. My mother. Every man. Every man. Every woman. Every woman. I forgive myself. 
I forgive myself. And I thank you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. I am free. I am free. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless her, strengthen her. Father, in the name of Jesus and fill her with the Holy Ghost. Yes. We take authority now. Any way the enemy would try to stop her from learning what she needs to learn to pass yes. these courses. Yes. I thank you that her mind is free. Yes. And grab hold of everything she needs to learn and lord i thank you she'll use this education father to bless you and then further the kingdom and i just want to thank you now for the joy of the lord is her strength fill her now with the precious holy spirit and thank you lord may she realize she is cleansed by the blood of jesus not by any works that she can do but it's by the blood that we are redeemed and we are forgiven and we thank you now for that peace lord fill her heart now with your peace right now. Woo, fill it right now with your peace, Lord. And you'll make the crooked places straight. And I thank you, you're gonna provide everything that she needs. And I give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God, amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Everybody clear? Keeping ourselves clear. All right. You are dismissed. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs>